Hi, Joanne Verkylan here, Circle and Bloom. Uh, welcome to week one of our new blogging series called How Einstein Would Get Pregnant. We're hoping that this is a fun way to look at our brain-body connection and how we can all proactively benefit ourselves from a health perspective as well as, of course, from a fertility perspective. So we read a lot of books, we're talking to a lot of experts, and each week we'll be coming up with a new topic that's within this framework that will be sort of intended to disseminate this great information. Um, what's going to make this even better, though, is if we hear from you and hear your thoughts, experiences, and it's going to make this um, a cooperative learning experience and better for all of us involved. So please chime in. We'd love to hear your experiences and ideas. So with that said, week one, I'm just going to do a quick synopsis of what you can expect tomorrow from our blog and both the podcast as well as our blog post. Um, we're going to be covering the basics of our cells. We figured week one, we might as well start off with the absolute, uh, you know, step one of our existence, which are our cells. Um, we're going to first cover the basics of our cells, such as the fact that we've got 50 to 75 trillion cells that make up our, our existence and they work in this community um, that are, that's called our body. And it's, uh, I think, very interesting when you think a bit about it that way and the fact that they, each and every one of them um, are their own little being. You know, they eat, they digest, they, you know, metabolize, they do, they reproduce, they do all of these um, things in tandem with each other and with, and in tandem, of course, with the messages that are sent from our brains and other parts of our body to tell them to do certain things. We're also going to be talking about with, within that same context is DNA and how the, the very popular DNA theory over the past 50 years, which of course led to the Human Genome Project, is really being put into question. Not, not so much put into question the importance of our DNA. DNA, of course, provides the blueprints, but they, researchers are now saying that there's a much greater impact of what the environment um, gives to our cells to instruct our cells to be certain things. Um, even our height, um, there's, a, there's actually a sad example of, and I'll just quickly do a side note here to show, to provide this level of example, is that there was a study done with, with children who were not held, not, you know, really loved or cared for, and literally their heights were stunted by like 30 to 40 percent. Um, so that's clearly the environment playing a role with respect to our physical bodies. Um, a sad example, of course, uh, but one that we, we can all learn from. We'll be covering, um, after we talk about that, and after we talk about the fact that genes and DNA are no longer thought as the absolute, absolute, you're given what you were given, we're going to be talking about some uh, important bodies of work that, um, that I have studied and read, the first of which is a book called uh, Biology of Belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton, and then we'll cover the work by Dr. Candace Pert, which uh, her book, Molecules of Emotion, is one of our reference books that we uh, go to a lot. And then the third is a recently published book called The Genius in All of Us by David Chank, which really is a very interesting book, chock full of examples, really debunking this, again, the DNA theory and how the environment and how we approach our lives using our thoughts, emotions, subconscious really can impact our cells and therefore our bodies and our makeup and our uh, health and lack of disease. So with all that said, please come back and check us out. Check it out tomorrow. We'll be, again, posting a podcast and the blog post and then check back next week for our next installment, which will be covering the subconscious, um, which I think, again, will be very interesting. So uh, again, chime in. Love to hear it and check back. Thank you so much.